Hi everybody, how's everybody's week going? I thought, let's do a whip and chat today. I thought, I need somebody to talk to, so I thought, who better to talk to than you lovely lot? Because you know that I love you all. So I thought, no, let's get the camera on, let's do a little bit on this and have a chat. <sighs> yeah, so what's the weather doing with you lot? I'll give you a guess what it's doing here. That's right, it's raining. Excuse me, it's only raining lightly, but as soon as I step outside the door or step outside the car, it absolutely tips down, and I mean tips down. And it is slightly windy. It's not cold, cold though. So you, you put a coat on and then you're sweating cobs. So it's not the best. I'm hoping it will dry up a bit tomorrow for the weekend, but probably not. It's British weather, so what do we expect, isn't it? So I hope wherever you are, the weather's good to you and you're doing all right. Um, this is um, the other African lady I'm working on for the experiment for rounds versus drills. And we will see how it goes. So I won't tell you anything so far, but you'll probably guess as I'm doing it. Um, yeah, if I did forget how much confetti is it on this at times, all this year. But hey ho, we're going to keep going. I might start another one now so I can do this one in between another one. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Did a bit of this yesterday in the afternoon and then a bit in the evening. I thought I'd do it now with you lot. Because my week has been pants week I've got to admit um I don't know if any of you, some of you will know um because I've talked about it before that I've watched um last year June the 10th my husband nearly cut his hand off with a chainsaw blade in our back garden so you can imagine the blood and whatever um we've got a local cottage has hospital up the road um but uh, usually when you phone an ambulance here, even if it's emergency around you, it can take up to 45 minutes if the one's here all right for the nearest one to get to us. And I could see the blood pouring out, so I wrapped a towel around it, got him in the car, drove him to our little cottage hospital because it's got minor injuries in there, but the nurses are fantastic in there. They've always said, if anything major happens, just bring him here. So took him there. They sorted him out enough to stop the bleeding. Phoned for an, an ambulance to come. Um, one had just got back from our nearest A&E, which is over an hour away. They came in, took one look at him and said, sorry, we can't take him. Um, well, we can, but it'll take. we'll have to take him to the nearest trauma hospital, which is over two hours away. So we'll have to get air support in to take him because they need to get in there quickly because it was such a mess um so they did the air ambulance came it only took 14 minutes for it to well not even that i think it was nearly just gone 10 12 minutes for it to get here from like if you drove for, from a, with a car it would take you an hour and a half to get to their base so drove the ambulance to the field well the ambulance took grant to the field and i followed behind and off he went um and then I drove down, which was two hours, just over two hours after, to him once I got the kids sorted and made sure they were okay. And then didn't have the operation to fix it the following day because there was a gas explosion in Swansea, so the theatres were taken up with that. So they had it on the Tuesday. They told me it'd be a two an hour, two hour to three hour operation, no more. So the girls wanted to come with me. Josh says, I'll stay at home, mum. See to the dog and whatever. <clears throat> so you haven't got to worry. I said, all right. So um, he went down 12. So rest, we'll go down into the costas. You can have a subways. And I bought some books and some cards and some word search and the iPad and stuff for him. And... Two hours went, three hours went, four hours went, five hours went. And I thought I'll give the ward a ring. Something's going on. 
They said, no, we've not, not heard anything. We'll ring you as soon as we know anything. Five and a half hours, six hours, six and a half hours, seven hours, just over seven, about, I don't know, maybe seven and a half hours since we left him. The phone rings. He's back on the ward. Tell you what, I've never been so relieved to get a phone call because we were stuck in Costas for seven and a half hours sat there. Then the girls never moaned once at all. Didn't moan, didn't murmur, just sat there. We played games, we read, we just we watched a bit of YouTube and stuff on there. So when up, and of course he was out of it, um, and they said it was a miracle that they got his hand back on properly um, and it, it should heal. It's going to be a long process, but it heals. So that was fine. So he was in for a couple of days, came home. We thought everything's hunky-dory, he's on the mend, he's going to be off for a while, but, you know, we'll deal with that, the consequences of not having money and whatever. And, and then... 17 days later after his accident, he woke up in the morning with toothache. I said, are you sure you're all right? Yeah, yeah, he's fine. He said, I just got really bad toothache. He said, I'll give the dentist a ring if it carries on. I said, okay. I said, well, I'm going to meet my friend Sam for coffee in town, which is only about a mile away from our house. I said, any problems or you don't feel well, ring me. I'll come straight back. You know, we'll pop you to the doctor. Said, no, no, he said, it'd be fine, it'd be fine. So I dropped the kid. No, Millie was at home because she wasn't very well. Dropped Jessie off at school. Went for a coffee. Next thing I knew, 20 minutes later, here comes my husband through the door. Oh my God, he was sweating. He was grey. Trouble breathing. I said, oh my bloody God, what's the matter with you? He said, oh, I don't feel right. I said, sit down a minute. And we, my friend was a nurse and she nudged said, doctors. So I thought, right. So I got him in the car because the doctor's was like two minutes away. So I took him up to the doctor's. I said, and she needs to see somebody now. And fair play, they got somebody. And he goes to the doctor. Oh, it's, it's fine. I, I don't want to bother you. She said, you're no bother. She said, but I can tell you now you're, it's an ambulance. So she said, but we'll have taken ECG while we're waiting. That showed that he was having a heart attack. So the ambulance came then. And they said, well, we have to ring um hereford a and he won't take this type of heart attack because it was a left bundle branch heart and um he said they have to go to the trauma unit which again is in morrison but if you know with a heart attack or a stroke they have like the golden hour that you have to get them there within sort of an hour and it's a two hour drive so they said right morrison said no we definitely want him here you need to get him here within you know, at least a, sort of an hour or so. And they said, well, it's going to be a two-hour drive. You'll have to get air support, and hopefully there's an aircraft available. Thank goodness, again, there was. So back up to the same field. I had to drive first because the ambulance crew had never been to the the field that their aircraft comes down on. So I took them up there. So then he was airlifted then back to Morrison. And, yeah, they confirmed that he'd had a heart attack. And, of course, you have to have this stuff die into you. And they put um, this contraption and they have to let the air out slowly. I, I can't remember what it was called. So he was in there for a few days. So they thought they got him sorted with that. So got him healed, got him back to work. Uh, I think it was in September, end of September. Fine. Doing hunky-dory. Then January, they decided to take him off his blood thinners and aspirin and everything. They said, oh, you should be fine now. You know, it's all sorted. We said, oh, great. That's brilliant news, you know, because they thought he might have had a heart attack because of the operation and whether a blood clot had come from the operation, blah, blah, blah. So we thought, great. So took him off. And then 4th of Feb, I think it was, I could hear a noise downstairs. About six o'clock in the morning. I thought, what's he buddy mumbling about now? So I goes down the stairs. He sort of slumped on the chair. He said, I don't feel right. And the way he was speaking, I thought, oh, my God, he's having a stroke. So I thought, right. I said, can you stand? He said, I can't stand. I said, I heard something go off in my head. I don't feel right. I can't speak. And he was slurring all the time. So I phoned for an ambulance then. So she said, oh, Stay on the phone with you. 
45 minutes later the ambulance came because it had to come from another little town um, and the, I gotta admit the ambulance lady she was horrible the man was nice but the man the woman was horrible she practically told him that he'd got a migraine and then she said oh they won't do much in, in hospital for you she said you probably just got a migraine I said it can't be a migraine I said he had slurred speech he's going off to the right he can't use his legs very well he can use the one but not the other I said he can't think about what he's got to say I said he's confused and he's got now he's got a massive headache she said no 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 it's, it's probably definitely a migraine she said so I was glaring at her so the other blokes bloke that was with us said, we'll, we'll still take him in and get him checked out you know just in case so I said fine so he went off of course you have to have all these tests and whatever and yes he'd had a mini stroke so again you know changes medication have to do all this blah blah and it's nothing to do with his diet um, or his cholesterol because that's fine it's to do with his blood he's got I can't remember what the condition is but it's basically sticky blood where the blood vessels the blood not vessels the red blood cells hit each other and they stick every now and again and usually another one hits them and they part but his doesn't always she said but the medication will stop that so he thought great you know he's lucky they found out what it is, he's on medication, blah, blah, blah. She said, drop the aspirin, but back on the blood thinners for life and you'll be sorted. So we thought, oh, great. And it has been great up until this Monday. Um, and he got up for work and he come upstairs and I feel a bit guilty um, about six o'clock and I don't get up to half seven. And he said, oh, I don't feel very well. I feel really sick and strange. I said, are you okay though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I'm not going in. I'm going to stay at home, which is unlike him. And I did think, did he sound right? And I must have gone back to sleep because I'd been up most of the night in pain. So I was really tired and I must have gone back off to sleep till my alarm. So when my alarm went up, I got up, got the girls awake, went downstairs. He was cooked up on the settee. So I thought I'd stay down here. I said, how do you feel? He said, I don't feel right. He said, I feel really sick. He said, it's not as bad as it was. I said, well, you sound as if you're slurring your words a bit. I said, are you sure you feel all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So I went and took the kids up and then come back. And I said, are you sure you're fine? Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, it's just that I'm so tired. He said, that's probably it. I said, I think you should, you know, phone an ambulance or take up the doctors, blah, blah, blah. No, no. He said, it's not like the last time. He said, I didn't hear anything go off in my head um he said i've just got a really bad headache coming now well that alarm bells because i remember him saying that if you've had a mini stroke you will get an almighty bad head after it's you know one of the signs so i said i think something's happened no no it hasn't no it hasn't and i said look i said i'm not being silly but we need it checked out well would he go no so i said well you've got doctors tomorrow to check on your medication and how it's going you're gonna have to tell him you know what's happened and my dad then came at quarter to 12 and he could see that his words weren't quite right so i said dad's note is so you've got to tell him yeah 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 i'll tell him i'll tell him of course he told the doctor doctor straight on to the stroke clinic in Hereford. yeah we want to see him on thursday um because there was no point there and then because whatever had happened had passed so, of course, he went yesterday. And, yes, he had had another mini stroke. I mean, he's fine. He is fine now. He's, you know, he's back in work. He feels okay. He's tired, but okay. So, the doctor thinks now he had a load of tests and ultrasounds and ECG, which showed the damage to the heart. Um, he had a CT scan, but the results hadn't come back for that. But the doctor thinks now that his heart is beating irregular. And that's what's causing the blood clots because he's got the problem with the blood and it's causing mini blood clots and that's probably what triggered um, the mini stroke so he said oh he said well do i need to change my medication or what and he said no 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 you can't change it because it's different medication for stroke to what it is to heart and we don't want to be messing any more than we have to he said, you'll be all right. And he said, well, what happens if I have a major one? He said, no, no, you won't have a major one because of the drugs you're on at the moment, but you could have another mini one. 
And if you do, blah, 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 no hesitation, phone, you need to come straight in. So, right. So now he's got to have a 48-hour heart monitor on to see exactly what his heart is doing. And then depending on that and the CT scan, we'll decide whether they alter his medication or leave it as it is. So it's a waiting game now. So you can imagine I have not slept much at all. He wouldn't let me tell any of his family. He doesn't want any of them to know. And before you say, they're not going to know about this video because none of them watch YouTube. So I have, I have told his sister on the quiet. Um, but apart from that, nobody else knows. So I've had to keep that a secret. So I haven't slept much worrying about him. So every time the phone goes, I think, oh my God. But hopefully, fingers crossed now. Everything's going to be sorted. We'll get an appointment through pretty quick to have this monitor and we can sort it out. So, yeah, and then my mum, who is 82, we've noticed over the last two years, showing signs of dementia. So, she's just been for a load of tests. Um, but the consultant said, I, I can't tell you the results yet because they have to be processed. But pretty much he said that, yeah, she has. And of course, she's been mithered this week, something chronic, which mithers my dad. And then he, he finds it hard to cope with her. So I'm trying to help there. And then they've had a nasty letter. Four page, four page A4 letter from their next door neighbour accusing them of bullying um, because they have killed her hedge or something. Dad says, I do remember putting weed killer down on my side. He said, but I honestly, this is just the same weed killer I've always used year in, year out. He said, no different. So she said, this letter has said that all the neighbours don't like them. Um, now, my dad's lived there since the day he was born. Um, nobody likes them. They call themselves Christians and they're nothing but bullies because they didn't own up to killing this hedge, uh, poisoning this hedge. I've only seen the letter today, so I am angry a bit about it. Um, and the whole village has got together, apparently, and they all think the same, that they should pay £150 or more to have this um, hedge be done. And then they can draw a line on it, but they'd be watching to make sure that they weren't bullying this woman because she lives on her own and she's ill. Um, she lost her husband over a year ago and how dare they do this to her hedge and well, it just went on and on and on and I'm gobsmacked and my dad doesn't want me to say anything. But you can imagine what I want to do. I'm thinking, yeah, my dad's ill. He's got Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is where your nervous system's attacked. So he's, he's, you know, all over the place some days. My mum with her, she's got fibromyalgia. She's had her bowels sectioned and her bladder and, oh, God knows what other operations and, you know, and now dementia. And, yeah, so they've had, they had this through the letterbox. Posted. And this woman lives next door, but she's posted it. So I said to Dad, ask the neighbours. What is it you're supposed to have done to the neighbours? Because I said, they all want to come round and be friendly with you and they go for a drink with you over the pub. So, you know, ask them. I said, because if I go round and ask them, I will ask them in no sh shape or fashion. She says, no, no, I don't want you to do it. I shouldn't have showed you the letter. I said, yes, you should have. So I'm fuming about that. And I mean, I cut. they said that my mum, on this letter, they said my mum had taunted this woman and said that my dad had poisoned her hedge on purpose. I can't imagine my mum saying that. Anyway, because she's not that type of person. But if she has said it, as she said it when she's having a dementia moment, I don't know. So I don't know who's telling what and where and why for. And oh. So I really don't know what to do for the best. I want to say something, but Dad's begging me not to say something. And I thought, well, I can't go against him. You know, he is my dad. But um, 
I'm going to photocopy the letter. She hasn't even signed it. She's obviously got somebody, she said she's got somebody else to write it because she was too upset to write it. Um, well, it just goes on and on and on. And it's beyond like. <clears throat> I said, well, why didn't they just, if, if that was the case, why didn't she just knock on the door and say, Bill, do you realise you bloody killed my edge with your weed killer? And he would have said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And he probably would have repaired the, give her the money to get a new hedge or bought her a new hedge thing you know he, he's absolutely devastated that he thinks that he's done that you know because he says no way in earth would i do something like that you know so he's upset to think that somebody thinks he would do something like that on purpose i know he doesn't use weed killer around the edge of their property to kill the red to kill the weeds do you know what I mean? and there's a fence as well between them but apparently no, he's done it all on purpose, so oh I am so angry over it, but I said breathe, breathe through it. On a good note, Millie went to CAMS, which is uh, the children's mental health team yesterday, and she had a good uh, chat and put a few things in place to help her. So she came out a bit more jolly. So um, we went for a coffee and a cake after, which she loved, just the two of us, which was nice. So hopefully this is going to help her with her mental health. Because I do worry. And then Jessie with her Tourette's. It's like she's finding it hard because she's gone up to year eight now, um, this term. And of course it's... A few of the things have been put in sets and she's not with some of her friends and you know and the teacher told her yesterday off for talking but she said mama couldn't help it it was a Tourette's I knew I wasn't supposed to for anybody that knows Tourette's if you're, you're supposed not supposed to do something that's what they do they can't stop themselves so she said I couldn't stop myself chatting so she said I got kept behind for two minutes and I've got to go in today I said well just go in and do it. I said, it's no biggie. But I said, if she, if it becomes a thing where, you know, then I will go in again. So she said, no, please don't, please don't. So I thought, right, she wants to handle it. That's great. But there's nothing like, you know, when your kids are hurting or something's happened to your kids or even your parents when they're old, you want to go in and get it sorted. I wouldn't fight for myself. There's no way I'd fight for myself. People can walk all over me, say what they want do what they want which they have and I never say anything but my kids is different and my mum and dad or my sister because my sister can't isn't able to t to talk and no longer do anything for anybody you know yes so that's been my week so far so I'm hoping the weekend's going to be better so we might go shopping on Sunday, Jessie decided now she wants school trousers. She wears leggings and a skirt, but she wants proper school trousers. But because she's a biggish girl, trying to get them to fit her without being like six foot too long has been a nightmare. But somebody says um, the ones in George, a friend of hers, is roughly the same size, has got some from George that fit lovely. So I said on Saturday, I'll take her down there. And uh, she can try some on there in the change rooms. So hopefully that'll be a nice day. So we can go for a Costa's coffee and a cake or something. And if it's not raining, we might take the dog because you can sit. Sorry, I was going to hiccup then. Sit outside with the dog if it's raining or leave the dog with Josh. So... Yeah, the dog was being a bit better this week and then went down again yesterday, being a bit sick again yesterday. So, found the vet again and she said, no, don't worry. She said it just be, could be that she's felt better and has overeaten a bit and her stomach's still not recovered fully. So just keep an eye again. But she hasn't been sick today and she's kept her food down. So hopefully she's well on the road to recovery. Jeff, Josh had his maths exam this week and I said, how did it go? He said, put it like this. Don't expect any more than a U. 
I said, oh, okay, it was that good, was it? He said, oh, stupid questions. He said, I didn't understand any of them. And I said, oh, well, you tried your best. As long as you went in and tried your best, that's all that matters. Because he's got mass dyslexia. So as soon as he sits at it, he's, he's just a jumble. He said, I can't even make out what's what. So I said, well, at least you tried again. I said, you know, maybe we'll leave it for a year. And then you can go and change it, try it again next year the end of your a levels so he doesn't know i said but if you want to resit it before then we'll resit it before because we can do them again in november so he doesn't really know what he wants to do so he thinks he decided now he wants to go into politics political something or the other at university i said which is i said do you realize how much more writing that is because he's struggling with the writing now with the dyslexia he said, yes, I know, but I want to give it a go. So I thought, well, if you want to give it a go, I said, right, you've got another year in six forms, see how you get on and then go from there. So fair play to him to want to give it a go. And then I think he wants to go into the RAF after because he does air cadets and he's a flight sergeant now. He's just been promoted to flight sergeant, so he's over the moon. So I think if he can get this and he... You go in at a higher stage or something, and then that, I don't know. I only get to know the bits and bobs. He'll tell his granddad everything, but he never tells me. I ask him, and I just get the, just the outline. You know, he says, it's my business. That's what he usually goes, my private business. I said, yeah, me and mother. I need to know these things, and he just looks at me. So he tells me the basics, and that's me lot. don't know if anybody else's teenagers are like that. Yeah, apparently he's still going out with his girlfriend that lives about two and a half hours away. Why he picks these girls from away, I don't know. Meets them through mates of mates. Well, he meets them through the air cadets, but she's not in the air cadets, but one of her mates is in the air cadets. and <sighs> They've got to know each other. and Yeah, but apparently that's still going because his nan asked him at the weekend and he went, yeah. I said, are you still going out with Kate? Yeah. I don't know, then. I think that's all he'd elaborate on that. But he goes on the train to meet a £14 return train ticket to go and see her. But he's working, so he uses his own money. I do give him money for food and stuff. Because I said to him, he said, oh, you don't have to. And I said, no, because you'd be eating at home. So do you, I know you've got enough money to buy yourself something to eat and drink. I said, but don't spend it all on her. <laughs> Which he probably does, but... Yeah, I did say to Millie, I said, um, any boys in the horizon? Ugh, no, she said, have you seen the boys in our school, Mum? She said, they're disgusting. They stink, they're sh silly. She said, they're very childish. She said, nope, I'm quite happy on my own, she said. Plenty of time for that, she said, in years to come. I thought, good girl. But you got your head screwed on at 14. And so I'm hoping, I don't doubt Jessie will be the bloody same, though, but... Millie's quite content with her own with her own company, whereas Jessie likes company. I don't know. Strange how all your kids are so different, aren't they? But I said I think um, Millie might and Jessie might have trouble having boyfriends if Josh was at home, because now you, you oh months a couple of months ago a boy knocked at the door for Millie and he he was generally just a friend and he just come to see her because he was in town. And Joshua was like, who is he? Right, we said, and he said, right, I'll be investigating him. Is he all right? Who's he from? Where's he from? I thought, oh, so she said to Grant, I said, you won't have to worry, because if she has a, ever has a boyfriend, I said, I think Joshua will give, be giving him the degree and warning him. Better not hurt my, hurt my sister. Funny, isn't it? He said, he doesn't speak to him, and if he does, he just shouts and bawls at each other. They just fight like cat and dog, all three of them together. But if he hears any time that somebody has picked on him or been mean to him, oof, he's straight to the defensive. Straight to the defensive. You know, say, right, I'll go and sort it. And you have to say, no, 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 it's, it's fine, I've sorted it. No, I'll know him. So I'll go and sort it. I'm going, no, Josh, it's, you know, it's my job to sort it, not yours. I'm in school with him. He said, I can have a quiet word with him. No, it's fine. <laughs> but it's nice that he, he, he wants to protect her. 
Millie said last night, she said, oh, you never guess what, we had a conversation. She said it was brilliant, me and Josh. I said, there you go. I said, that'll be it for a couple of months, so probably. There won't be any more. She laughed. Yeah. Oh, I know the other thing I wanted to talk to you a lot about. I need some ideas. I was thinking, I mean, 860, is it? Subbies at the moment. And I thought that I might give away, give it, put my teeth back in, do a giveaway when I hit a thousand. But I don't know what to do. Because I want to include everybody that is aboard, but postage at the moment is so blinking expensive. It's just astronomical. I sent a little parcel to one of Joshua's friends in America the other week, and it was 25, well, 24 95 nearly £25 for the small parcel. There wasn't an awful, there was only some sweets and crisps and things. It wasn't, wasn't that heavy. And I thought, oh, if I want to send a de something decent, it's going to cost, you know, an absolute fortune. So I don't know what to do. And then I thought, well, do I do vouchers? And then if I do vouchers, I don't know how to do them for starters, but I'd have to investigate. Would be would people be okay with doing a voucher? And then I'd have to make sure that if it was an international, if I did like Amazon vouchers, we've got Amazon UK and we've got Amazon.co.com. Does that cover everybody that's abroad or... Why is it you always miss one? See one there, one there of the one sign. Um, so if anybody's got any ideas, will you jot them down below for me? Because I'd really like to do one to say thank you to everybody. And I thought, well, you know, I mean, I'm, it might take me two years, mind, or three or four years to get to a thousand. You know, but I just thought I'd like to do a little thank you but and I think <clears throat> was it I'm sure Mrs Coffee I'll have to try and text her or something that had trouble with one giveaway once when she was it she did did she do cash or voucher or something and somebody claimed it that wasn't the person that it was and oh I don't know see I I think of everything that could go wrong and probably would go wrong with me but um then I thought well do I would it be cheeky to do a voucher? Would it people prefer if it was a gift, you know, a diamond painting of some sort? Or oh, I don't know. So please help the poor woman out. I need some comments below. I'm not saying anything about this painting, but you can probably guess my problem. But I will keep going, I will persevere, and hopefully, you know. That's why I want to do something else as well as this one. I have got a parcel that's coming. Well, it came in. No, it came in Saturday, I think. But because what happened, and I was going to open it on Monday, but because of everything that happened, it's just been left in my hallway um, on the side. And I've had about four or five emails now off AliExpress saying, it was signed for. Are you going to press confirm? So I thought I'm going to have to open that and film it today so I can say yes or no. Because I won't just press it without opening it and seeing who it's from. Because I don't think I've ordered off this company before. So it's a new one. So if I press confirm, you can guarantee there'll be something wrong with it. Or it'd be missing half a dozen things or something. So after this one, I'll download this one. Because I don't know how much my phone holds as well. So. And then I might do it after. Or I might see if it'll hold both this and another one. And I've gone... So I've just... I said to you last time, didn't I, that I changed phones to an Honor 10 Lite. But, and I put the Kingmaster app, the same one as I was using on my Honor 8. And I used to have no trouble with it. Load straight away. No problem. But since I've been on this phone, oh, it takes forever to load on Kingmaster before then, you know, you put it on there and then you have to export it and then you have to put it, and then you put it down to YouTube 
get it ready to go to YouTube. It takes forever and sometimes I have to go off it and go back on it and do it again about three times before it will load. It can take an hour, whereas before it used to take five, ten minutes at the most. If it was, a, you know, an hour long, it wouldn't take long. So I don't know whether to uninstall it and then reinstall it or what's going on with it. But I did love, I do like the, the little app because it's just easy for me to load up. I can't do editing really very well. I'm not very good at editing. As I you all know, I'm not a techno whiz. But, um, yeah, so I don't know what, what's going on there. Or whether to go back to Movie Maker or look into something else. I don't know. Saying that now, it'll probably work fine now when I do it after. It will. So, yeah, so I've started to catch up, I think, on a few videos. Yeah, I try and watch some at night as well when I'm in bed. So I might watch two or three things of one person, catch up on theirs, and then go on to another person, watch a couple of theirs to try and catch up. So I haven't been ignoring you, just that with Grant with his mini stroke, I haven't had as much time this week as I would have liked to, to watch them. So yeah, so I'm hoping things are going to look up again this year. So I said to Grant, I said, why is it always around my birthday? I said, so no birthday last year, so it could look like there'd be no birthday again this year, the way it's going. But hey, oh, I suppose it coming up 52. It doesn't really matter, does it? No. I've seen them um, Diamond Art Club. Um, oh, who did it? Oh, who, I'll tell you, it was Diamond Art Addiction, Sher Sherry. She got the Tree of Life. I hadn't seen that one, and I, oh, that is stunning. I can't wait to see her do, her do that, finish that one, because I want to see what that one looks like. Because I said, um, if I, her mum said she'd give me some money, but she'll probably forget like last year, and I ain't going to say anything. She said she might give me 20 quid. So if she remembers, I'll use that to pay for the postage and I'll put the extra and get a picture for my birthday. I'll buy myself a picture. If not, then I'll just save a bit longer because money that I did save, Grant's had to have two and a half days off this week. He might have to have more off and more tests and whatever. So we'll have hardly any money next week to pay the bills so the bit of disability that I've got left that will have to go to buy food and electric and gas next week so but I'll get there I get there so I'm just watching everybody else's and putting it all on my wish list and I quite fancy Gemini as well off Diamond Art Club seeing as I'm a Gemini well I say that there's quite a few that I fancy you know You know, you go on there and I think, mm, do I like it, don't I? And then, then I see somebody un unbox it or they've just started it or they've completed it. And I think, oh, actually, I really do like that one. So that goes on the wish list again. I said, I've got wish lists. I think <laughs> ink on every diamond company out there. I go on, have a look. Ooh, that's nice. I saw one yesterday that I really like never heard of the company i think it i think it was on aliexpress popped up and it was um it was an eye but it was a steampunk eye so it was all steampunk stuff all around the eye i don't know why i'm going around my eye because you can't see me around my eye what i'm doing <laughs> but yeah that was quite nice so that went in me on my wish list and then i got a wish list with aliexpress and then i got a basket full as well <laughs> Mm, I do laugh. And then the companies of their own, they've got a wish list on them. If they don't have a wish list, then I've got it written down. So I don't forget where I've seen things. But never mind. 
right I suppose I can hear Joshua in the shower he hasn't got any lessons to well, he did have a lesson today but they've cancelled it so they said he might as well stay at home so he was late coming in from Air Cadets because last night he was at Air Cadets from 5 till nearly 10 o'clock at night setting stuff up and doing stuff with the younger ones. So he was tired last night and I don't think he went to sleep then because he was overtired. Till about 2 this morning I could hear him rummaging around. So I said, which I didn't mind. But what's that on there? Oh, no, it's not. Um, so I let him sleep on this morning. So I can hear the shower going. So he's obviously woken up. He makes me laugh. He has to have a shower when he gets up. And he usually has a shower. Be if he's got meeting up with his mates, say, I don't know, four o'clock or something, he'll have a shower then. Or if he's working at five, he'll have a shower before he goes to work, another one. And then if he's not, then he'll have one just before he goes to bed. I said, you're going to wash yourself a bloody way, boy. I mean, I understand one shower a day. But no. He said, I get so hot and bothered, Mum. His room does get warm, though, even with the windows open. But I suppose he could be the other way and not bother to wash at all. But he's so clean, if you know what I mean. He's always washing. But why do a boy's room always smell? No matter how much you clean, you dust or polish or whatever, it always smells. And I can't really say whether it's just a sweaty smell or what smell it is, but it's... I can remember a friend of mine saying when Josh was little, you know, you wait till he's, you know, a teenager on, the room will smell. I said, oh, it doesn't smell. She said, no, it doesn't happen until they're a teenager. And then, whoa. And she was right, boy, oh, boy. I said, the girls' room doesn't. <coughs> and they are a lot messier than jo Josh. Well, they're not. They go through stages. But, oh, what am I doing? I need to fill them in. Oh, plonker. Um, but they're, they're messy in the sense of clothes all over the floor. I've got Josh a wash basket so he does in his room so he does have it on the floor and then picks it all up and chucks it in the wash basket. But yeah, but the smell, even with the windows open. Hmm. And he says, I can't smell nothing. I thought, I bloody can. And I can't say to him, go and wash because he has up to two showers a day. And he sprays that much deodorant on himself and for the aftershave. And if he can't, if he's used his aftershave, he nicks his father's. You know, so I can't say that. Uh, excuse me, uh, I can't say he doesn't have clean clothes every day because he'll have clean clothes about two or three times a day some days. If he's been sweating or he thinks he's been sweating, he'll change his clothes before he goes back out. So I don't know. It's a boys, they say, boys. I do like this checker pattern better. I am starting to use the three placer a bit more. Um... But I do like the checker pattern and I like the click as these go in. You know, as your squares go in. It's nice. Satisfactory, that's the word. Satisfactory? Satisfaction, that's it. That's the word I was looking for. It gives me, I feel, is that the word? Yeah, pure satisfaction for doing it. You know, pushing them in and hearing that click. I think that's the word I want. No, oh, well, fibre. Can't think of words. So yeah, I so saw loads of few watched a few whips this week. So I do enjoy them. It's good when you sat do doogling doing this and just put one of them on and Ooh, sorry about that. Listen, hang on, I've come back, I've got to answer the phone to hubby. Sorry I had to move the phone so I haven't put it back in the exact place. That's hubby ring ringing at dinner time. He rings me ten o'clock in the morning on his break to see if I'm okay and one o'clock just makes bless him to see that I'm okay but I'm quite glad because then I know that he's okay if you see what I mean and he said where's the pups I said she's on the camel saddle because the camel saddle grants actually meant it so she's back on sitting on that I said she keeps wanting to sit on my knee and I'm saying no because if you sit on my knee I can't diamond paint and she says, but mum, I want to sit on your knee. No, because I want to diamond paint. And she sat on the camel side, camel saddle by the side of me. Right, I love you and leave you beautiful lot. Thank you for letting me have a chat with you and getting things off my chest. Made me feel a bit better about everything that's been going on. 
Um, yeah, I always feel bad when I sort of chat like that because I think there's a lot of people out there a lot worse off than what's going on in my life. But hey ho, I can't, it does get me down because I suffer from depression anyway. I do find it hard. So I thought, well, I've got nobody else to talk to, so I talk to you lovely lot. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart if you stuck around and listened. I do really, really appreciate it. Yeah, and if you've got any ideas, please, what I asked, I would appreciate it. If you contact me, I'll put my contact details in the description below. You can either contact me that way or put it on the bottom of here, whichever you feel comfortable doing. I would really appreciate it. So thank you, everybody that's uh, subbed and liked my videos. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to my channel, thank you and welcome. And again, if you'd like to sub, press the little the old subby button. And by the side, there's a little notification bell that will let you know when I go live, which is usually a Sunday night, um, or when I put a video up. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Look after each other. Take care and speak soon. Bye.